Hey guys, Kathy Rankin here with your weekly soaps roundup. And you know, it was a sad week on the soaps. Um, we had the passing of Christoph St. John, who was one of my favorite actors. I've been a Young and the Restless fan for 30 years, and he's been on there almost as long playing the character Neil. And we just want to say we're sorry. We send our condolences to his family, his friends, his co stars, and we are dedicating this show to him because the show must go on. So this is for him. First on The Bold and the Beautiful, in the plot I am now referring to as Babygate, Reese saved his daughter Zoe from a ruthless thug by paying off his debts with the money he got from selling Hope's baby. Now, Rich, who is just sharp as a tack, began to feel something wasn't quite right about the adoption, while Florence continued to worry about her part in the crime. Now, Steffi named her new daughter Phoebe after her late sister and Hope was introduced to and unknowingly held her daughter for the first time. Coming up, a resemblance is noticed between babies Kelly and Phoebe. Of course it is. Now over on Days of Our Lives, Rex and Sarah reconciled while Eric struggled with his feelings for Sarah. Leo's mother Diana arrived in Salem and her son was furious to see her. But she was thrilled to reconnect with John Black, who she knew when he thought he was Roman Brady. And Hope worried when she hadn't heard from Ciara, who had been kidnapped and you guessed it guys, tied to the bed in the same cabin that pretty much everyone who's ever kidnapped ends up in somehow, someway. It's not exactly the most secret hiding place anymore, is it? Okay, coming up, John suspects Leo may be his son. Now, over on General Hospital, Ryan was unable to finish the job and kill Lulu, but fortunately for him, she had oh so conveniently blocked out the details of the attack. Now, you guys, this is a common soap opera medical issue that makes it easy for the writers to justify the most ridiculous plots where murderers end up being redeemed and being able to become friends with their victims later, or better yet, fall in love. Now, Jason and Sam's reunion was short-lived when she decided they needed to fake being broken up so she could use her heartache to infiltrate the dawn of the day cult that her sister Christina was involved with. This sounds like a brilliant idea. What could go wrong? And Sonny was forced to put his father, Mike, in a home for Alzheimer's patients when his condition declined. This is the most depressing storyline. Coming up, Ryan uses Franco as a pawn. Finally, you guys, on The Young and the Restless, well, a drunken Mia made a scene at Abby and Arturo's engagement dinner. You knew she would. And later, she admitted to Phyllis that she couldn't stop thinking about her brother-in-law, Arturo. Now, Jack confronted Carrie about her stupid secret syringe and claimed she was planning to freeze her eggs to keep her options open. What? Where did that come from? Now, my favorite troublemaker, slutty Summer, was back in town and set out to use Fen to try and make Kyle jealous. She's not wasting any time. And of course, that's what manipulative, spoiled bimbos do. And in a plot that I couldn't help but think was stolen from the movie Poltergeist, Victoria and Billy were horrified when Katie, who had made a mysterious new friend at the Newman Ranch, went missing, but she could be heard behind the walls. Coming up, Nikki makes an admission to stop Victor's trial. That's it for this week, you guys. We'll see you next time on the Weekly Soaps Roundup.